Listening to Living Legendary Podcast with Lady Sham and Baby Nigel. Today, we have one of the most iconic television personalities of all time, the incredible Bobby Trendy. Bobby was the star of the Anna Nicole show on E! Entertainment, and Bobby was also an interior decorator, and now he is an amazing realtor selling real estate all over the Coachella Valley and all over California. If you have a home to sell or you're looking for your dream home, Bobby is your realtor. Bobby, are you there? Yes, thank you for having me on your show today. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Honestly, Bobby, I I have to admit, I'm very excited. Even though you're my friend, I'm genuinely a fan of yours. Oh, thank you. So, Bobby, and I just, I'm a fan of yours. Well, you have very good taste. Now, Bobby, let me <laughs> let me let me ask you a question. Really, I got to get. I, I really have so many things I want to ask you. I want to talk about your real estate business, of course. Now, and I want to talk about Anna Nicole and all these things. But really, I want to start at the beginning. Where were you born, where did you grow up, and what brought you to Hollywood? I grew up in Northern California. I worked at Kmart, Denny's, Wendy's, and I washed dishes. I saved up four years of pay, and I met a woman at Beverly Center with a cat named Cynthia, and we hit it off, and then she said she was going to Europe for a year, and she let me rent her furnished apartment in Beverly Hills for $500 a month. I couldn't move down there quick enough. So I took my four years of pay at all these jobs, moved down there. And then when she moved back, the landlord let me rent my own apartment. And everything started from there. And Nothing how old special. were you? How old were you when you moved? I was a 18. Only 18? Uh, 17 or 18 years old, yeah. I knew that I told my mother I had to move out of the house. I cannot stay at home, live at home, and just be a bum. You know, I had to do something. I don't know what it was, but I needed to do something. You know, I had already work experience, you know. It seems like you were always very dri- dri- driven. Oh, is that your dog? You have a dog? Yeah, many of them. Yes. How many dogs do you have? Right now, four. Four? Are they all rescues? Oh, yeah. Everyone's a senior. That barking one's turning 21 July 1st. Wow. Well, Bobby, I want you to say hello to our co-host and audio engineer, Nigel. Say hi to Bobby, Nigel. Hey, Bobby. Hi, Nigel. And uh, I was just using sign language there. Uh, I have five dogs, so uh, I, I understand uh, uh, the love you may have for your animals. Yeah, I love these old ones because nobody wants them. I, I typically pick them up in pairs. Now, uh, what what do you have as far as the breed is concerned, whether it's a uh, um, you know, off the street or, or off of, uh, and chihuahuas. I have, I have four chihuahuas and one French bulldog. So I, mm. think, I think our kinship is already uh, solidified now. Yes. And no one here has teeth, but me. Okay. You know what? Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to dig in for one moment. You know, um, the show that you were on as you know, some people know you from the Anna Nicole Smith show. That was a great yeah. show that was on E entertainment. Um, and I used yeah. to watch that actually with, my mother, my sisters, and they really loved that show. And I loved it too. And you were such a great personality in there. You, you were so fun and so positive. And when Sham said, yeah. um, said you were coming on, I was like, instantly I knew exactly who you were. And I was very excited uh, uh, to know that you were on the podcast. So thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, that show was perfect for me, not other shows, but that one was perfect for me. Bobby, how did you meet Anna Nicole? Before... Oh. That show started taping. I met her at the Academy Awards party, um, the, the special after party that they had because they had bought furniture from me. So I was given four tickets, and I attended that party, and Anna was well photographed that night. She had on a sleeveless dress that had like an oriental embroidery on the above part, and her hair was up, and I have photos of us together from that night. And then... That was like uh, six months earlier. And then the show started taping in June, and it started airing in August, if you can believe that, that quickly. And we would tape as we went along. 
So for our listeners that don't know, Bobby Trendy was a furniture and interior decorator. He's a furniture designer. He designed his own furniture and had his own store in Beverly Hills. So he had a lot of high-end clientele. Anna Nicole wasn't your only famous client. Am I right? Yes. My first famous customer was Usher Raymond, Carmen Electra, the... um, Cypress Hill, you know, a lot of people, Victoria Gotti, a lot of the people came in before Anna, but Anna is the one that put me on the map. And what was the relationship like with Anna prior to taping the show? Um, there, there wasn't any. So no. you, you and Anna weren't, cause it seemed like on the show to the viewers, it seemed like you guys had this long history of friendship before coming on the show so you didn't really know her that well not very well no i'd only see her at events you know but we didn't hang out at each other's houses or anything before the show did she approach you to be on the show or e entertainment did e did they 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 called my store and said would you like to be on this show and i said oh i don't care i don't know what it is but i'll do it do you have um this is Nigel here. Do you have an idea of how they found you? Because I'm sure, you know, you are very talented, but the market is saturated by people with your, you know, profession, well, you know, I'm just curious because back then this, this was pre uh, social media, I believe. Right. Yes. It, 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 social media had just started, you know, you wouldn't even use a term like that. It wasn't even created at that time, you know, cause that, encompasses all these apps that you talk about these days, you know what I mean, that we use. I um, Someone worked on that show that had known me named Mark Steplin. He works at E! Entertainment. And my store is on La Cienega Melrose. That is the largest store in that entire street and the fanciest store with an awning outside. I had my name on there. And he asked, he called my store and asked me if I wanted to be on this show. And I said, yes, because I didn't know what it was, and it sounded like fun. There's a lot of designers out there that are much more talented than I am. They're, they're architects. But I really am a salesperson. You know, I have workers that will make your couch any color you want, shape, size, width. But I, we pride ourselves on the speed, custom made in five days or less. That's where I come into the picture, and I outseed all the other ones. And when you're taping a show, you want who is going to be quick, not this two, three month thing. You can order a couch today, and I'll be ready tomorrow. Well, you know, so word got around. So that's how I was the lucky one. I'm not the best one. I was the lucky one. Well, Bobby, <laughs> I will. I will absolutely say this. You were an amazing character on the show. Some people, including me, watched it just to see you. I mean, you were so hilarious oh, and over the top. And I really have to say, Bobby, this is really, I mean this. I, I mean, I'm obviously transgender. And back then, there was very little LGBT visibility on television. I really believe that you were one of the first out and proud people on reality TV that I can think of. Oh, thank you. You know, if they thought I was crazy, then they should see me now. You know, <laughs> did you get any, did you get any like sort of hate or any, um, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know what? Speaking of which, Nigel, I remember now Matthew at my store, we would get emails to my website and this, I wish I could show you with my hands. The stack of hate mail was at least 25 inches tall at all times. And then there's a small stack about two inches of people that did like you. And then there's a stack about three inches tall. You could not understand if they liked you or not. I remember this one doctor from Virginia. He said, you took the gay movement back by 20 years by the way you acted on the show tonight. And he signed it, Doc, or something. And I said, you know what, Doc? I just made you 20 years younger. There you go. You know, Bobby, so you're I so turn, fucking hilarious. No, Excuse my language. I turn lemons into lemonade instead of bitching them out. You know, you just have fun and make fun of everyone and everything and yourself. There's not enough time in this day. I wish the day was 48 hours long because I went to the 99 cent store today, Target, this, that, Smart and Fun. There's not enough time in the day for me to live my life. 
to do my thing. You know what I mean? So I don't want to spend my time being negative and adding to people's upsetment with their own life. That's why they're upset with you. When they're upset with their life, they want to bring upsetment to you, you know? Well, and that's the only reason why they're that way. They're upset. You know, we're not upset in the way they treat us does not affect us in any way. For somebody that can turn around a couch in 24 hours, I think you're right mm-hmm. on time. Thank you. <laughs> that's now, why I have done well. They pay up front. They're happy. They tell a friend. Now, Bobby, No sad stories here. No violins here. I hate to play devil's advocate. And in fact, I know the answer to this question, but I'm going to ask it because I, I, I think our, our listeners would like to know. Is your personality contrived or are you who you are? What we saw on the Anna Nicole show, is that you or is that something for the television? Oh, no. I'm actually worse. That um, was very tame because don't forget at that time, there were only two reality shows, the Osborne and Anna Nicole show. So you could not compare us to any other show like Beverly Hills housewives and all them. They plan events, they tape events, you know, all these other ones are like scripted now and the editing takes a long time. Like RuPaul's show takes one year to edit those shows. They don't air right away. That show we would tape as we go for example, if we're taping this week, on Friday, they would tape in my store whatever we just did, and then I would do the, the interview called Off the Fly, I think. I would say, oh, and now Anna's going to be eating at the pizza place. Watch this. That's taped on Friday, and it is, and it airs on Sunday two days later. So, there was no makeup artist. That's why I look like shit. You know, there was no clothes. I didn't know what to wear. If I had known, I would have had my costumes made that I wear now, you know, and really serve you a look that you won't forget. On that show, everything happened so quickly. You just, you just wore what you had and there were no makeup artists to your makeup or hair. That's why Anna's makeup was terrible. You know, it wasn't professionally done. I think there was her hair. I think that's, you know, almost a bygone era in reality television where it's so real like that, because I think the newer shows right. are kind of formulated. But I will say I recently was on Catfish and it was the same thing. And when that episode came out, my hair and my look was a mess because no makeup artist. I completely get what you're saying, Bobby. Oh, really? Now, listen, babe, I got to ask you, what was Anna Nicole like when you hung out with her? Because after the show, or at least during the show, when you were taping For our viewers that didn't see the show, Mm -hmm. you actually had a falling out with Anna on the show. So prior to that falling out, were you guys close? Were you friends? Were you hanging out? And what was she like? It was odd because the the, there wasn't a falling out. The thing is, they because of Howard, he couldn't stand me. He had told. Hold on, Bobby. Just so just so our our listeners know, Howard was Anna's personal assistant on the show. Mm Yeah, that was his, her personal assistant. He was older, and he felt that I was taking too much money because Anna would pay me at night. She'd write a check, and I would deposit it the next day. Howard was not there at nighttime when I received those payments, and he was upset that I was receiving payments. But Anna was a customer, and she had custom-made things made. And one day, Howard instructed Anna, let's rip this bed apart that uh, Bobby made for you. And then I think that they were drinking or something. And then they followed suit with that on that Sunday, the show aired on Sunday, but don't trip. No violins here. We sold 221 of those beds in the next eight days. Oh, Bobby. My machine was full of orders from here to there. I'll never forget this one girl was chauffeur driven from the West Carlton in uh, Laguna Niguel by her dad to order two of those beds for her sister and her, that girl was only 15. Well, Bobby, you, bed you are from here to Switzerland everywhere. You're incredible, Bobby. I love that you turned. That I was so into lucky. Business. 
Oh, well, I, I, honestly, Bobby, I think it's a combination of luck, personality, and talent. I mean, I loved your designs and your furniture. You had amazing stuff. I remember your store oh, on La Cienega you. Boulevard. You guys, just so you know, La Cienega, La Cienega is a street in Los Angeles, rather unremarkable. You wouldn't see much. But then there was this awning. It said Bobby Trendy Designs. And in the window, you saw the most elaborate, I'm talking like Renaissance-style king you know james or whatever that era was yeah. furniture just beautiful stuff and bobby designed all Thank this you. so bobby Thank while while you. we're on the subject of anna nicole i just i i feel like i've got to address the elephant in the room we all know that anna suffered serious substance abuse problems did you ever suspect that that was going on while you were taping or did she ever tell you about it or did you actually ah. see anything now, oh, I wanted to say one more thing is when they ripped up my bed, I thought, oh, no, my career is over. Everyone in America is watching this show. It was E's highest rated show. My career is over. I want to tell everybody out there, your career is not over because of one occurrence. That occurrence drew so much attention that we sold that many beds from here to kingdom come. It turns lemons into lemonade. Never think that one occurrence in, in your life or your career, because a lot of people would kill themselves over something like that, or being on a show and they were maybe embarrassed, you know, a relationship that went wrong or something. It's never worth, worth killing yourself or thinking that your life is over. It is not over. And no, not everybody in the world saw that happen. You know what I mean? So I wanted to say that out there for all your listeners, that a black cloud does not stay over a house for too long it has to move on to other homes now, Bobby, now for, for the people that, that didn't question. well for the people that didn't see it what happened she tore apart your bed Anna did yeah the bed was a tufted bed which is out of pink satin it was beautiful her and Howard took knives or something and stabbed it and tore all the fabric off of it and they wrote on the bed you know so um, that was a very um, childish thing for Howard to instruct her to do, you know, to ruin such a piece of art. You know, she paid 15000 for that bed. It was not cheap. Did the production, to, did, did production, do you think, tell him to do that? Or that was Howard's idea? I think it was, it was Howard's idea to cause that drama and to cause it to be sensational. You know, because that show, that show was not too exciting. I brought the drama. If I had known what reality TV was or TV in general was, I would have brought more drama, Sham. I would have came cross-dressed some days, undressed some days, and maybe in a new jumpsuit some days. If I had known that I could bring more fuel to the fire and kerosene, believe me, I would have, but I just didn't know at that time because I thought, you know, they're taping, I thought this is for real, but on TV, nothing is for real. I could have came in there dressed as a woman the next day and then dressed as a boy and then dressed as a woman the next day, back and forth I go, just to shock the viewers. If I had known that that's what you know people want to see, they like to see the circus, they like to see the craziness, I would have done that. I, I don't think that I was outlandish on that show at all, but most people do think so. Now, I have a question for Nigel. Nigel, is this so far your favorite podcast we've done? Because it's, <laughs> it's mine. I'd say it's very insightful because for somebody, I mean, we're lucky enough to uh, interview people that we choose. Uh, there's no mm. producer, nobody saying, you know, you got to talk to this guy. It's, but there is nobody like Bobby. But there's nobody like, well, let me get to my point. Basically is I have a few guests that I say, hey, Sham, this would be great, great uh, conversations with. Sham does the same. The moment that Sham mentioned your name, Bobby Trendy, that took me back to where, again, where I lived with my mother and my sisters, and we would watch your show weekly, oh. and they loved Anna Nicole, and they loved the Marilyn Monroe thing and everything that she would mm -hmm. do, and, 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 and she was such a beautiful woman and such a great spirit to where when I, I thought of her, I thought of you right away. I said, I know that guy. I know exactly who that person yeah. is. That'd be a fantastic. And uh, to hear your voice, I can say, yes, you are right up there with, uh, I mean, this podcast is getting... Um, so awesome because of people like you and, and stars like you and, oh, and people that are you. like you, you are a talent. And that's, that's what this podcast is about. It's about legendary people, which you've made your mark and you continue to do so. 
Well, thank you. I'm here to live. A lot of people are not living, they're dying. You know, you have to decide if you want to live or not. And it's free to live. It's completely free. But every day you wake up, it is free. It is wonderful to get out of your bed and open up the curtains and see the sunshine, you know? And it's free. There's nothing for you to die about. Hey, hey Bobby, can I... Everything can I, to live for. Can I just say, um, I believe you do this, I do this, Sham does this. We do for a living what we love. Can I say that? Mm-hmm. Is that true yeah. for you? Okay. Well, with that yeah. being said, that's already very great position to be in in life. And when things go wrong, it's not over. You know, yeah. your life is not, the day is maybe, the day may be over, but your life is not over. I was definitely paying attention when you said, you know, one mistake in your life can dictate the rest of your life um, because people have bad days, but without bad days, we wouldn't have good days. Yes. And, you know, bad days, really, they're just um, almost like learning experience, like something went wrong. Oh, you know, not to do that again. It's an adjust. It's an adjustment. Yeah, it's an adjustment. And we learn from those things. And if we don't learn, we don't grow. And it's free to learn. You know, I learn new things from people. And the Internet is full of information. I love it so much. It's a great invention. Now, can I ask? Wonderful. Can I ask, because we, we've talked about you, which we will get into more about you, but what you are in is a field, and that's design, and to inspire, who inspired Bobby Trendy? Who were your designers that you looked up to? What blueprints did you study? You know, I there's only one store that's like mine, and that's Phyllis Morris. A lot of the local people here would know who, who that designer is. And um, because she and I do maximalism, my entire store, the ceiling was tinted like a carousel. You know, the first 25 feet was gold. The next 25 feet was silver. And then the next 25 feet was burgundy and uh, gold up top. And there were chandeliers in the middle of each one of those ceilings. And they, Phyllis Morris and I, we specialize in 24 karat gold beds and finishings and tables and everything like that. So I was... When I first went to Phyllis Morris store, I was invited to a party. I was really excited about it. I said, oh, this is what I want to be like, but in my own way, somehow. I'm, I'm totally uneducated in interior design, design in general anyways. I'm more of a salesperson, and we we make for you. You bring in a picture, we make for you. You know, So I let the customers really do the designing. Everything in my store are things that I like. The chandeliers are the ones that I buy wherever they're antique chandeliers. If I like them, I hang them up. And all the accessories that you see, I collect them because I like them. So I just put them everywhere and everything is so crowded that it looks good. You know, it looks like the Versailles Palace. That's the look that I do and Phyllis Morris does. Fancy over the top, not minimalism. You know, Jonathan Adler is another great store. He, you can't really explain him he has his own set way of his design. It's very distinctive, you know, so he's another great one to look at. Also other designers earlier in time would be Dorothy Draper and William, Billy, I forget his name, Billy Hines, Haynes, Billy Haynes. He was very attractive. All the Beverly Hills actresses and, and residents would hire him, you know, cause he, he looked so good. He was another, and he has a book too. I have his book, Dorothy Draper's book, and Tony Duquette is another one. Tony has like wild designs too. I'm more drapery, upholstery, and 24 karat gold finishes. Tony was just, everything was funky. Jonathan Adler's, everything is bright. Dorothy Draper was a lot of enamel, a lot of glass, a lot of uh, things that are curated custom and plastic. So, Bobby, yeah, so. as as a designer, you know, you're always reinventing yourself, but also as a personality and a person, you're also reinventing yourself because now you're a realtor selling real yes. estate all over the Coachella Valley and all over California. Yeah. What brought you into real estate? Well, my friends always said, oh, Bobby, you should get your license. You would be good at this. And I just didn't want to do the paperwork. So then I got the license and then I opened up my real estate business and I 
have two people that will do the paperwork. So I don't have to do any. One person has 18 years of experience. So I don't have to worry about any paper. I'm not going to get sued. You're not going to get sued. No one's going to get sued. And I have the customers. So it's just another tangible good to sell houses. You know, furniture houses, it's all the same. Now, when Bobby, what's the name of your business so, so we can find you? How do we? How do our listeners find you? All our listeners, I want to tell you right now, if you have a house to sell or you're looking for your dream home, Bobby Trendy will hook you up. Yes. How do we find you, Bobby? Bobby Trendy. They can, I'm found easy on Facebook, Instagram. I am Bobby Trendy on Instagram, Bobby Trendy on Facebook. And, you know, the thing is, for me, what I like about this real estate thing is I focus on 600000 or less. However, uh, if you have a $20 million listing, for me, that's great too. But I'm not out there chasing the big ones. There's more people that need my help that need to be pre-qualified. I have a, a lender that will lend to – it's so easy. To, um, anyone I've ever seen would return anyone away. But it's easier for me to help people that are first-time home buyers or families that want to move out of an apartment into a home you know, so I'm not out there chasing these big deals and these houses that could sit for a year or two. Every house, every listing I've had the house built in uh, one course of seven days or less. Bobby, so you may know this or you may not know this, but I'll refresh your memory and, yes. and the listeners. Sham and I are broadcasting from Palm Springs, California. Mm-hmm. And have you sold any homes or are working in homes in the Coachella oh, yes. Valley? That yes. is what that is what. Palm yes. Springs is okay. Let's talk about. Yes. Let's talk about Coachella oh, look, Valley. Even, even the dog is screaming yes. Yeah, even the dog's excited. You know, before I had my first listing over there in Palm Springs proper and Whitewater, I attended the uh, real estate weekly meeting they have there on the board. It was punishing. It started at eight a.m. because everything out there starts early because the sun rises so early. You automatically wake up. So I went to that. And I made a personal invite. I put on everyone's chair there before they came in to invite everyone to my broker's open that day after the the meeting. And it was catered by Mendocino Farm. So I invited the entire room to come. It was wonderful. In December, I had four closings in Palm Springs. And in January, one closing in Palm Springs. So it's just easy for me to sell out there here. I've been living back and forth there since 1991. Wow. I love Palm Streets. My favorite store in the world is Revivals. Oh, and Tyler's I love hamburger. Revivals. That's, yes. That you can find and treasures at Revivals. Treasures. All of my um, kitchen appliances are there. All my pet things are from there. All my decorations are from there. Bedding, underwear, I buy it all. Shoes, everything. You don't have to run around the world anymore. Just go to that, the three locations. You will have Christmas. You will have everything. And I love Tyler's Hamburgers, John Henry, of course, Tropical, 849, Stacy's. I can't tell if they're open or closed or what's going on over there. But I, I, I love all these places. And that macaroni place over there in Indian, I think it is. And what, what Bobby's yeah. talking about, sorry, Bobby, is Revivals, which is a thrift store or secondhand store or yeah. uh, store where you can buy brand new furniture, very mid-century yeah. modern couches, yes. furniture, Beautiful, very well priced, and also very, very nice. I think half my house is from Revivals, and I have, yes. I have uh, like really nice high end furniture. Alan and mm-hmm. Heath, uh, uh, really great furniture also made clothes. out of wood from the U.S. and and clothes. I've too. bought many a drag outfit from there. Let me tell you, Revivals, and I, and I have many Paisley shirts from Revivals and cowboy boots. <laughs> Fashion. <laughs> Fashion is at Revivals. By the way, Revivals can be found. They have different locations. There's one in Palm Springs, one in Cathedral City, and one in Palm Desert, and maybe one somewhere else. I don't even know. It's all over the place. I think it's a brand new one in Indio. I think it's Ethan Allen is what I was looking for. I think I said Allen and Heath. Allen and Heath is an audio mixing board. My mind went there, but yeah, Ethan Allen. I have a very very nice uh, entertainment center. And it's uh, it's made from them, and that came from revivals. Now, you never listen, know what you'll find there. Since we're having a reality television revival, Bobby, I do want to ask you <laughs> still, you know, because I, it's not really me; it's actually Barbara Walters. I think the late great Barbara Walters is chiming in, and she wants to ask the tough questions. So I had asked you before about Anna Nicole, and it's you know public knowledge that she struggled with substance abuse. 
for a long time. In fact, that was what led to her death from my understanding. So I wanted to ask you, while you knew her, while you were taping the show, was there any sign of this? Did you see anything, you know, that led you to believe there was a problem? There, I did not see anything because I went there mainly in the daytime. I only went there one or two times at around eight o'clock. And in the daytime when the cameras were taping, the, nothing like that was seen by me. So this whole occurrence at the Hard Rock Cafe and then the bag of some, some what was the occurrence? Bag what, what, what was what was the occurrence at the Hard Rock Cafe? Oh, her death. She died at the Hard Rock Cafe in the Bahamas. Is it? Uh, yeah, in the motel. I think on the third floor. Were you so, Were you shocked when she died? Were you surprised? I was not shocked. I was hearing things, but I was surprised it would happen so soon. And then Howard was carrying that doctor's bag of drugs. And, you know, Howard and... Um, I'm sorry, Howard was what with the drugs? He always had this black doctor's bag they were talking about. Howard... He, Howard had doctors prescribing drugs? Yeah, well, Howard and Sandeep Kapoor, the other doctor, and Christine Erevich... They lived next door to Anna over there in Avenida Caballero. And they were all arrested that December when Anna died. Avenida, died Avenida, where is Avenida Caballeros? Where is that? It's in Studio City. It's right where that brown church is. You so, just turn right there. So these were Anna Nicole's neighbors, and they were yes. doctors, basically yes. drug dealers. Yeah, they were um, subscribing medicine and picking it up on her behalf not in her name. And I think, I don't think that's legal to do if you're a, a writing doctor, you know, a real doctor with a license, you're not supposed to do that. So they got arrested for that. And, you know, the feds, they did come to my store and they interviewed me for four hours in March. Anna died in December. She had the longest death you've ever seen because it, it, it everything was a, the wild, wild west. It was a circus. All these idiots, these trainers, these doctors, these other ones, Jaja Gabor's gay husband came out saying that the baby could have been his. His trainers thought it was his. His dressmakers thought it was theirs. People that never even met Anna. So it was a circus. And then Dr. Perper, the for, coroner, for our listeners that, was, that for our listeners that don't know, Anna had given birth shortly before she passed away, and shortly also before her passing, her son passed as well. Yes, her son died in this September, and then she gave birth. In a, I, I can't remember when, but in probably January maybe, and then she died in February, February ninth, I believe it was. Uh, so when she had died, it was, you know, a circus. Nobody knew what happened, who's the father, who isn't the father, and what went on. And when the feds came to my store, they interviewed me for four hours. They were in for a surprise when they met me. Uh, the questions that they asked were three questions in different phrases. Have you ever sold drugs? Have you ever furnished drugs? Have you ever transported drugs? The other question would be, have you ever killed anyone? Have you ever thought about killing yourself? Have you ever thought about killing others? So those two questions were peppered in with other questions, but they're always the same ones. It's always the third question that would ask the same. And they were there for that length of time and they were very shocked at how I was answering the questions in such a free way, you know, in such a manner, you know, in such an ostentatious and austere way. I had nothing to hide. Yeah. For, for our listeners, you would think somebody um, uh, that is in the public side, that high that you would say, you know, I would like you to speak to my lawyer. Granted, you are a beautiful human that did no harm. And that's mm -hmm. great for you. And, you know, I'm sure she's looking down on you smiling. So that's just and insane. I wasn't afraid. And well, can, you, can you just, I mean, that's a very, very uh, intense situation. Can you just break down, like, what was your day like? You show up to work, and then the men in black talk to you. I'll tell you what the you. day was like. Let's, let's love, hear it. I love saying it. First of all, let me tell you what I was wearing. I know you've seen them before. At American Apparel, they have those hot shorts, the tennis shorts. They're nude, and then there's a zip-up ho hoodie that's nude with black piping, so it looks like you are naked. So I pulled up. At that time, I was driving a Rolls Royce, 
I pulled up to the yellow zone of my store in the very front. I never come in there unless it's 5 or 6 p.m. This is 11 a.m. So I pulled up. I had this funny, sexy outfit on. My door is 12 feet tall and it's all gold. They came up to me from behind. He said, there you are. I knew exactly who they were. They had suits on, those little stars on their lapel saying, you know, their private eye. And they said, there you are. And then I looked over my shoulder and I said, oh, did you want a photo? I said, in that voice and in that tone. And they said, no, we don't want a photo. We're here to talk to you about Anna Nicole Smith. And, and I said, and who are you? And then I opened up the door. I let them come in and I pushed a button and the curtains opened up motorized because we sell them. And then the chandeliers came down really slow and flickered up. They got scared. They said, can you keep the front door open? I said, oh, no. People can't get a glimpse of me for free. Please have a seat. And on my fireplace mantle, you could see pictures of all the famous people that came in here. And they kept asking me those questions. But I said, you know what? Why would I be peddling drugs when that couch you're sitting on is $15,000? Why would uh, I need to peddle drugs? You know, and, that would, and then I unzipped my top and I kept spraying more perfume on me and answering all their questions. In front of my desk was a sofa on the left, there's a sofa on the right, there's two chairs facing me and go. So two of them sat on the left, two of them sat on the right, and they kept looking around because they were like afraid someone or something was going to jump out. So don't forget the ceiling is tinted and there's mirrors everywhere. And I don't think that they were ready for the Bobby Trendy experience. Oh, Bobby. Well, I mean... It was an experience for them. I'm I'm amazed to hear that the other doctors got, I mean, I'm glad that there was some justice because the other doctors you said got yeah. arrested. Well, they did something wrong. They benefited financially at the cost of someone's young life, you know, and if you're a doctor, you know, you are not supposed to be subscribing medicine for anyone other than who it's for and in those amounts. Were there others besides the doctors that were in Anna's life that you think were a bad influence or leading her down that way or even enabling her or supplying her? Well, you know, towards the end, all these people came out of nowhere, like these bodyguards, these nurses. I've, I've never heard of these dressmakers, these alteration queens uh, that I've never seen or heard be, of before. Did they, I, I, I and Kimmy and Howard, uh, the cousin Shelly, were a few of the staple people that you saw on the show that actually knew her or were related to her and had a history, like Kimmy had a history with Anna. Kimmy was her Shelley. Kimmy was her assistant, for those of you that don't know yeah. don't know, she was the purple yeah. hair assistant on the show. Yeah. So these people actually know her. They know, you know, I know her. But then all these people came out of the wood where I've never heard of. So and they just. So Bobby, you kept a relationship with her after the show. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you kept talking. Yes, yes. But I felt that these other people were not good news, and I didn't want to go downhill when they did because anytime you feel like your gut instinct, you should not be over there because when they go down, they all go down. Mm. And I sell, you know, furniture and real estate. I'm licensed, fingerprinted, and everything else by the state. I was not going to lose any of my licenses. Those police, I mean, those doctors, they probably did lose their licenses over this because uh, of that behavior. I don't know if they're fined, if they lose their license, if they can renew them, or do they have to go re-educate themselves again? But I was not going to go through that entire schooling again. You know, it's not worth, I would say, the 50 cents I would make on such a transaction. You know what I mean? Now, for those, of you, worth it. for those of you that, you know, you heard earlier, we talked about Anna Nicole's baby. That baby is now a beautiful 16-year-old girl, Danny Lynn Burkhead. Larry Burkhead ended up Ooh, being the yeah. father. So, Bobby, I just want to know if you could say something to Anna Nicole's daughter, Danny Lynn. Danny, if you're listening. This is a friend of your mom's. What would you like to tell Danny Lynn about her mom? I would tell her that her mother was a very hardworking single mother who kept Daniel, her brother, in private school and shielded him from the cameras until he was ready, till he turned 18 when he wanted to be on TV. 
that's when he came around and was to be on TV because he wanted to be. And that Anna was the breadwinner of that family and paid for everyone's food under that roof. No one had a, had a job on that show but Anna and I. Anna was the um, the person that the show was surrounded around. I, you know, was a decorator with a store. People could see that I'm working, Anna's working, and that's why people bought things from me because they related with me. The doctors, the lawyers, the janitors, the people at McDonald's, they're like, oh, Bobby is like me. He works, you know, but all the other ones were just all freeloaders, you know. So I would definitely want to tell her that her mother provided for more people than uh, normal people do. And, and that she paved the way for many single moms to say that they can do it too. If Anna can do it from Little Mahia, Texas, and become a star, you can do it too. Everyone can be a star at any level they'd want to be in. And a star is all relative. It all depends on what you think a star is. Now, Bobby, if you could talk to Anna, if Anna was here right now, what would you want to tell her? Oh, I say it all the time on the internet. I want to thank Anna for changing my life and lifestyle because that show really put me on the map. And people, a lot of times when they're discovered, like on American Idol or something, they try to sway away from that and like detach themselves from that infamy or what caused their notoriety. Not me. I embraced it. And I said all the time, if it wasn't for Anna, nobody would know who I am. That show brought me on the map uh, all over the world. And then when she died, I was doing four to six interviews a day and I am still doing Anna interviews every year, coincidentally, in the month of September, because then they start airing around her birthday in February again. So it's, it's perpetual, this type of fame. That show was the only show for me to be on, not any other show. That show was perfect for me. I don't think anyone has ever stretched their 15 minutes of fame out longer than I have. You Bobby, know? Bobby, with, with that being said, 15 minutes of fame, how many episodes, no, rather, how many seasons was the show. You know what? That season, I mean, that show was only two seasons. However, people that live far away do not know. I bought commercial airtime from Santa Barbara to San Diego, and someone recently just sent me that commercial. I have that now. Where I bought, it was Adelphia, and now we have Spectrum. Any couch, any color in five days, and it panned through my entire store and the front of my store and the phone number outside. So, Every other commercial during the segment of the show was one before, two during the episode, and one at the end, and 60 spots for the whole week for 1500 bucks a month. So I overly saturated that show with my presence, and I told them that I would do the commercials leading up to the show, which is the thing we tape on Friday, for completely free. And I told them that they don't have to pay me to be on the show because I was only supposed to be on there one day, one day only. I said, you know what? After the first day, I said, you know what? You guys don't have to pay me to be on this show. I'll gladly do it for free. Well, that leads me to my next question is the first episode. Can you take us to that first episode? Again, you got a call from a producer, what have you, somebody in the industry that worked for E Entertainment. And, mm -hmm. you know, they went to your store. They knew about your store and they, they brought you in. Yeah. Can you get us to those very first, you know, uh, you know, steps up to the, to the, to her house or however the, the, however the episode opened, can you get us there I, and how true it was? Yes, I was, the episode shows me driving up to her house and then I park my car and then I knock on the door and I said, hi Anna, I'm Bobby Trendy, your new decorator. And then I, the door opened, she was there and then they decided to come in the store for the next following day they came in the store and we taped in the store and then she ordered things and then they were delivered and then I, I thought to myself oh these people are very passive so then I decided to make that store into my commercial for myself and buy commercial airtime for myself so then what I did was I brought Anna the right furniture but in the wrong color so that I could say oh and I'm so sorry. That's the right couch. It's the wrong color. Cause you know, on my website, it comes in 50 different colors. I'll bring the right one tomorrow. So then I would bring the right couch, but the wrong bed. So that I created my own role to stretch my fame out my 15 minutes out 
love. I know people hate that term, but I gladly and freely use it. Of course, I wanted to stretch of my 15 minutes out throughout the entire season, which I did do. And then even with my mattresses, I had stickers made that were six feet by six feet. And you could see Bobby Trendy on the wrapping of the furniture and the mattress as they were carrying it in to overly saturate that show with my brand. Uh, I think, I don't think anyone has ever done such advertisement as I have done on any of these shows these days. They they wouldn't let you do it. Number one. Well, like you said, like, sorry, number two will come, but like you said, you are a salesman. So that, that goes without saying. I am a salesperson. Uh Salesperson. And yeah, salesperson. And people wouldn't be buying commercial airtime either. Can I get into this um, just very quickly? We talked mm-hmm. about your very first day, which is great. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm visualizing it. It's it's all going down in my head. Now, why did she need a Bobby Trendy? Why couldn't she just go to, you know, Rodeo Drive or, or what have you, go somewhere and just pick out whatever? And, you know, uh, why did she need a designer as, you know, why did she need you? Let's let's talk about that. Um. I think other than I, the other than the show, unless that was the, was the main case, I was a chosen one because the friend of mine that works on it, Mark Zeppelin, he has known me beforehand already, so he already knows that my personality is not run of the mill, and my store is not a normal furniture store, you know. So I think that they wanted someone wild and crazy on that show because she is, you know. Because there's a lot of other stores up the street. Furniture Row is where I was, where all the high-end stores were. Marge Carson has a beautiful store, too. But Marge Carson is a much older woman, and I don't think that she would have given them the excitement and fervor that they wanted for that show. Because E! is a wild show. You know, they were doing... It's, what's that it's, one it's E! Entertainment. Yeah, E! Entertainment. They want to entertain you, you know, so... Um, they wanted someone wild and crazy. There's much better designers than I am out there. Uh, you know, much more. I, I, I love how you're so <laughs> humble. I love how you're so humble along the way. That's all I'm going to say because you've already said it too many <laughs> times. You. You're obviously that's very true. talented. You're obviously very talented to have had uh, a career that's current. So you know, thank you. I just because I was corrected one time on stage at the Pacific Design Center over here. They were giving out awards to all the designers at the design center, which is like the design center mall. You might describe it as that for designers to go in and buy things. If I didn't make it, we didn't sell it. So someone was receiving an award, right? And this one bitter queen was on stage and he was like, oh, I see so-and-so, I see so-and-so. Oh, and I see Bobby Trendy. Come up here, Bobby. And I walked up on stage and there's like three little steps there. And I said, hi. And to let you know, a decorator is me. Some of us uneducated, we decorate. You don't need a license to do that. A designer, there's no license to be a designer. But if you're a designer, you may have gone to school or you may have been considered that you had gone to school like an architect maybe. So that's the difference between a decorator and a designer. So then the queen said, Bobby, how do you feel being a decorator amongst all these designers? You know, he was trying to, you know, read me. You know what I mean? And I said to him, you know, I'm very honored to be here with all these designers in this room. People were aghast when he said that to me. I said, I'm very honored to be here with all these designers. But do you think everyone in this entire room knows that I am a decorator, but at designer prices? (laughs) Bobby. I'm going to ask you one, one, (laughs) one last, one last thing, not last, but but, uh, it's brilliant. But I want to ask you one thing, and I think Sham's going to chime in. I want to ask you, so you are this this designer. When you walk into a building, like, okay, I'm a musician or a music producer. When I listen to music, mm. sometimes I'm thinking about, you know, how this was done or, or if it fancies me, if that's a, a good word to use. When you walk into someone's house, say you meet somebody, they invite you over for, for, for lunch or dinner, what have you, or you go to a hotel or you go to a club – do you look at the furniture and, and are you thinking, geez, I wish I could help them out. Who's the owner? How can I, you know, are you constantly working or are you, can you turn it off? Cause some people can't turn it off. 
Oh no, I never uh, offer people my opinions at their place of. No, 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 no. I, I mean, I mean personally, <clears throat> not not you're going to go, you know, like look for business. Obviously, you're busy enough in your head. Are you looking at someone's couch, being like, "Wow, I could, you know, I should do this," or do you just does oh, that no, even come into your consciousness? <laughs> never. Okay, that that's it. That's a great. Oh, no. That's that one answer. Never. One answer. One. Yeah, that's great. Sham. Okay, Bobby, I know that we spent so much time on Anna Nicole, but if you guys have ever Googled Bobby trending on the internet, you'll see that Bobby knows every celebrity. I've seen pictures of Bobby with Kathy Hilton, Lisa Rinna, with like huge, huge stars. You know, like I'm just saying off the top of my head, but I mean, there's so many people that I've seen you with Paris Hilton, Kim Kardashian, Bobby. Well, you know the same ones because they all have your artwork, which is so phenomenal. Well, God I bless still have you, the Bobby. Thank that you, you. That I have from you. I and did do. I did. Rena, Bobby, Bobby, you did Bobby, Bobby. So excuse beautiful. me. I did three of you. I didn't just yes, do I one. I did three. I did Bobby like back when he was like a, almost like a like little that's, baby Bobby, like 18, 19 year old Bobby when you first came to Craig Hollywood. Because I knew you, the one Bobby. I, I, Anna's show I, look, I, I have to admit to our listeners, full disclosure, I've known Bobby before even the Anna Nicole show. I knew Bobby from mm-hmm. West Hollywood. I had just moved to Hollywood myself. I was a young club kid, go go dancer, and I would go out to West Hollywood to like the Abbey and all these places. And Bobby was the queen bee. Bobby was Bobby. (laughs) Exactly. That's why when I asked that question, I said, I already knew the answer to, are you just putting this on or is it you all the years I've known Bobby? He's been Bobby. So this was Bobby before even going on the show. And then when Bobby got on the show, everybody, I mean, this is really, I'm going to ask you two questions because I didn't get to really the one about the famous people, but I, I really, this will be like the last Anna Nicole thing, but like, it's not even about Anna Nicole. It's about you. But like after the show, did your life change? Like, what was it like with the fame? Like, did you just like get recognized everywhere you went? Like, what was it like? It, it changed for me. And, you know, it was so bizarre because, you know what? That show was the highest rated show at the time for E! Because all you could It was really the highest watch- rated show in America. It was it was out of control. That show was that iconic. Was. It was the Osbournes. You were right. The Osbournes was first, and then that show came, and it was like that was it. And it had a really cool yeah. animated intro as well. Yes, the thing about the Osbournes, they were on MTV. E uh, doesn't pay. Um, what is it called? Residuals or anything? And they run their own commercials, their own production. They ran that Anna commercial all day all night, the one specific for that show that I was on and Anna was on, over and over and over. It was such free advertisement. And then when Anna died, it was um, five years after the show, it renewed everything all over again for me. I was doing six or seven interviews a day because even Nancy Grace had me on her show two times in one day. So you your, know, life, com- your, life, the rest your life completely changed after the show? It changed after the show and it changed after she died because after she died, my interviews, I spoke much more eloquently and was a better choice of words, you know? And is that purely so, because you know that your voice is reaching the masses, you know? I mean, Yes. Okay. And also when you're on these type of shows like Hannity and Comb, you want to be and sound much more glib in your words than they do because then... They don't take advantage of you what, because you don't know how to speak right. What, you know I will, what I mean? What I will tell you, Sham and, and myself, part of our show, actually the, the real part of our show is we want to put our guests in the best light possible and we handpick our mm-hmm. guests and there's no gotcha. It's all love. And yeah. I wish there were more shows like that where they would just embrace people that are truly passionate, living, legendary, which you are, which is the name of our podcast. You are living mm-hmm. currently. You're a legend. We love you, Bobby. Where did Bobby Trendy, obviously Trendy, we know what Trendy means. Is that, is that your real name? Is it not your real name? Uh, No, I added the Y, it's Trend. I added the Y, Trendy, because someone made it up for me in sixth grade and they thought it was a cute name. So I just adopted the name since sixth grade. Now, is that a trademark? Is that a, a certain thing or is that just your name? You know, my credit cards are in that name, bank accounts, everything. I don't think people really take note. Well, I'll, I'll say, you know, that show <laughs> that show was on the air, uh, you know, a uh, handful, you know, quite some time ago. But I remember it when Sham said Bobby Trendy. She didn't say Anna Nicole. She didn't say E. When she said Bobby Trendy, 
I was like, I know exactly who that is. Oh no, honey, you and were, I'm, you I was were born the in 1990. Star of the show, Bobby. When I saw you on TV, I, because I already knew you before, and I was like, this is yeah. perfect for Bobby. Is what I thought. And then when America fell in love with you, I just, I just knew. I knew because mm-hmm. I saw you before you were a hit. I knew just people had to see it. I was it. so lucky. I see it every day. I was so lucky to be the chosen one on that show. And that show, again, was the perfect one for me. Not now, Bobby, Bobby, I didn't get to ask you my question because, like I said, if I – if I, like, really, I just Googled you now while we're, while we're doing this just to see. And, like, I see a picture with you and Joan Rivers, who to me is the biggest star of all oh, time. Joan so Rivers. there's So you've known everybody. So I want to know, Bobby, please tell me, besides Anna Nicole – Tell me about your favorite celebrity encounter and your least favorite. Go. You know what? They, they've they always been very friendly, except Cindy Clifford was not that friendly, the model. Who? Cindy Clifford. Cindy Clifford? We're at a, Clifford? Crawford? We're at a ballet. Do you mean Crawford? Cindy Crawford? Those, Clifford? Yeah, that one. Okay. Yeah, she wasn't so you really met you really met Cindy Crawford, the model. You really yeah. met Cindy Crawford. Okay, yeah, I've actually I don't want to say things. I just say allegedly because who knows if she's litigious. I've heard things, and I've heard maybe your experience has been uh, the same as others that have told me things. But I saw oh, recently. Yeah, the, um, okay, go ahead. She, she just wasn't that friendly in the valet area, but oh. you no, know, Carmen Electra was. A oh, dream. I love no! Please, I love Carmen. Car- please, okay. please, everybody, Google Sham and Carmen. You'll see. I give her artwork, and I know Carmen mm-hmm. personally. She is a doll, the sweetest, nicest. There is no celebrity nicer, and no celebrity more gorgeous. She looks flawless. I'm Great sure she'll be on the podcast at some point. Oh, I wish Carmen, if you're listening, please. We're begging, Bobby. When she came beg in, my with me. I didn't know who she was, but I noticed. Who, because I didn't watch a lot of TV at that time. This How could you Anna. not know who she is? She's iconic. She's like Pamela Anderson. She's, Baywatch. She's she was in Good Burger. Please, she's Prince's girlfriend. <laughs> And she, she dated. Uh, she was, just so yeah. she was in scary movie. She She's in. iconic. Yeah, she was so beautiful when she came in the store. Oh, me. That's what and I it, said it when I saw her stunning. in person. When I saw her in person, she looks better in person than in pictures. I couldn't believe oh, it. Yeah. I was like, "What is this?" And she literally looks like she's like. I don't know what kind of time travel machine she has, but she looks like a good three decades younger than what she was. She was all over MTV at the time as well. Lots of things. And yeah. Spring and Break. She, she looks incredible. Dennis Rodman. She, I, I mean, Dennis Rodman. Wonderful customer. Dennis Rodman. Okay, so what? what, what he's fun. I've partied with him. What's he like? I've he met him. Me I've met him one everybody time. Has. <laughs> Who hasn't? He went to one of my shows. I'm surprised everybody here hasn't slept with him. He's crazy. Yeah, At the he same is time, very unique. Him. He's he very is. unique. Dave Navarro <laughs> is another oh, one. Oh, he's a doll. He was you wonderful. know Dave? Yeah. Who, yeah, so Bobby, but who's, Beverly Hills Bobby, hotel. what was Joan Rivers like? Please tell me. Wonderful. You know, I've met her three or four times and she had me on her show. She uh, was, uh, it's sad that she died because I don't know anyone that treats you as if she's known you for a hundred years. You know, she's, she was the same person every time I met her. I met her when I was 16 and then afterwards, after Anna she had me on her show and then she invited me to fashion file to fashion police. And she was just so accommodating to everyone there. And I, I noticed how she interacted with everyone in the audience because normally when they stopped taping the, the star of the show would go in the back. She would interact with people in the audience like, Oh, where'd you get that necklace? It's so pretty or something, you know? And she made each person in her audience feel special. And I am so upset she died. I'll never forget that day. And she would have been 90 this year, still working, too. That accident was just odd. She they died that- while having surgery. Was it? And it wasn't well, plastic no, surgery. Was I think it was exam. a thro- No, she had a, a procedure, I believe, and she died during the procedure. I don't yeah, know. You guys was- Google it. We don't want to say anything wrong. We do deal in facts. And I'll tell you, for the record, factually, Joan Rivers is one of the most brilliant comedians of all time. Joan Rivers. Oh, well, for, incredible. For sure. And you and you know all the jewelry she she sold on QVC, all of the course. you know the costume jewelry. Of course, I have plenty of it here. It was so beautiful. Also, her estate sale. I have the catalog here. She actually wore the originals from Bulgari and all those other companies, mm-hmm. and they were auctioned off at her estate sale. Her Melissa, of course. And so she actually wore the real thing and sold um, her versions of them. What a smart lady! Wow, to do that. 
Now, mm-hmm. Nigel, is there is there anything you'd like to ask Bobby in closing, Nigel? Well, I want to bring up, you know, Joan Rivers for a moment. Um, I'm a big fan of comedy. I'm a comedy promoter. I, I pay comedians to, to come out and perform at clubs and things oh. like that. And she's like the female Don Rickles. She's so quick. Oh. She is just on it. She'll just like nobody can hold a flame uh, to her. It's just she'll she'll just put you out there. Well, nobody. You know, she's so I quick. Know- I know everyone's watching Netflix these days and Hulu and all this. What I really like to enjoy at night is I go on YouTube and I just Google Joan Rivers on YouTube and I watch her at the Apollo. I watch her older shows, her newer shows, all her on stage shows at the, what is it called? Live shows, I guess you call them. I'll tell you. And they you. never get old. I switch between her and Phyllis Diller. Bobby, you're talking to the queen of Googling Joan, I'll tell you the best thing ever. I don't know if you've seen this, Bobby, but I'm going to tell our listeners, please watch this. Joan Rivers shrink wrap. It's an hour with her, with a therapist, with a therapist. She talks to a therapist for an hour. You will cry. You will laugh. You will. She tells her whole story from start to finish. It is the best conversation I've ever heard with a celebrity. It's just her and a therapist. It's incredible. Joan Rivers shrink wrap. I will watch that tonight. And you know what? She never gets old. I can watch the same thing on rerun same. the next day. I've she wa- never gets old. I've watched that shrink wrap like probably 10 times. No joke. Really? Yes. She's that compelling. As a, And I love Rivers. it because in that she's just really herself. And it's like she's that to me compelling as a person. You are too, Bobby. Honestly, this conversation, it has oh, blown yeah. by. Like you're so – you're such an amazing interview and I'm so – grateful to you for doing this nigel is there anything you want to ask bobby in closing i don't want to ask i just want to make a statement or i just want to just let you know uh from the bottom of my heart and shams as well thank you for spending this last hour with us i don't know i don't know where you are i'm sure you're at home i'm sure you're surrounded by chihuahuas and uh, (laughs) uh, what color are your chihuahuas actually well these two sisters one's a light tan it's three pounds one is long haired, it's three pounds and it's brown. And then there's two little mini Dobermans over there. Beautiful. I love dogs so much. I love, actually, I love yeah. Chihuahuas so much. I love all dogs, but my first yeah. dog was a Chihuahua. And I have, like I said, I have four Chihuahuas in a, in a Boston. And uh, they're the loves of my life, other than my one year old son. So, Bobby. Yeah, they're all so special when you look at their little eyes. Oh, they're, 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 all, they're so soulful. Unique. They're soulful, they yeah. are protectors. Nobody's gonna walk by my house, my property, without this dog's, you know, waking up and let alerting me. Oh yeah, they are. The they they are secure. They have little mm-hmm. sweaters for them that say security. Actually, it's kind of funny. Oh, yeah. how cute! Uh, you know this little blonde chihuahua. If there's a spider on the wall, it can see it from all the way across the room and will bark at that spider on the wall. Wow. This you know, I love dogs too. Well. I'll say this prior to this hour. Chihuahuas do- are special. Well, prior to this hour, dogs were my favorite thing. After this hour, for sure, my favorite thing is Bobby Trendy. And hopefully our oh, listeners agree. You. Now, Bobby, Ooh. where where can we find yeah. you? Tell everybody where they can find you one more time. And don't forget, Anywhere. if you are in the Coachella Valley, because we are on KWXY FM 92.3 in Palm Springs, please don't forget your realtor of choice is Bobby Trendy. Bobby he will Trendy. sell your home and he will find you your dream home. What's your name again? It's Bobby Trendy at AOL.com. <laughs> that's your, is, that, broken, is that your email? Bobby, that's, that's your right. Email. If it's not broken, don't fix it. $600,000 and above. Okay, Bobby just gave his email publicly. No, Bobby or under, absolutely. Bobby, is it actually okay to take this? Oh, oh under, sorry. And Bobby, I, I we have to say, misquoted. We have to say for uh, legal reasons, is it okay to tape this uh, conversation and broadcast it? Of course. I need you to tape it. I need you to broadcast. Oh, you're so smart, I would Bobby. Love it. You're so smart. I was supposed and to ask sure that. You I was supposed to ask that in the beginning, but here I am doing it at the end. I know. I make sure you post it on Craigslist. Oh, post it on Craigslist. Okay, I All will, Bobby. It. Absolutely. With visuals. We'll put it on Tinder and Grinder too. Yes. So, and, and we need the visual. You know what I was wondering? We didn't bring up. How come no one has ever given Joan Rivers an award for um, being the best dressed woman? I mean, she she wears so many jewelry, necklaces, jackets, sequins. 
She is the best dressed woman in the world, but she was never acknowledged for that. She was very well dressed and, and dressed uh-huh. as, you know, the women uh, years ago, you know, uh, the people that we would, you know, look in books and they have huge yes. diamonds on their neck and yes. gorgeously cut dresses. Bracelets, everything. I think maybe and she's just so intimidating that <laughs> people are probably scared of her. I don't know, but she, she's incredible. She also did the most, she did, she well did the most uh, renovation on her face. All sorts of scarves. You know, she would do a lot oh. of the uh, red carpet interviews and she was oh, you know way, way more entertaining than anyone she ever inter- yeah. uh, interviewed rather. And to touch on what Sham just said, she looked like she was 50. And I think when they did that procedure, they didn't, they forgot that she was an 83 year old woman. And they, I think they overly sedated her. I, that's, that's that's what what I, exactly. It happened because my understanding was it was an operating room that was not in a hospital environment. It was like a, pla- I, I don't mm-hmm. want to say plastic surgeon because I'm not sure that that's what it was. In fact, I'm such a fan. I know kind of everything. I think it was the procedure on her throat and she was um, about to, you know, just, it, it was a, it was a like kind of standard thing. And she minor. goes in and then they put her under and she doesn't wake up. And it was and a tragedy. And Melissa, her daughter, I was recently listening to Melissa's podcast, by the way, you guys, Melissa Rivers, her daughter has a fabulous podcast. Um, it's called Group Text. Listen to it, please, on Spotify. It's amazing. Oh. But Melissa was talking about um, how when she found out about her mother's death, TMZ called her first. Like the TMZ oh. knew first and then like she heard from an assistant or they something seem to know, like that. They seem something to know like things that. that happened before it was, they it was really, I mean, before like, yeah, her own family members. Like, I mean, I can't imagine, first of all, I can't imagine having a mother that's so high profile that that would happen. And then having it, you know, the, the news of that, like the emotional impact, well, she talks about it on the podcast. You should hear it. It's incredible. And she was to live forever. Cause she continually, like you said, looked young she kept herself looking young, so you would not think she's going away anywhere because what she really looks like, you don't know, you know, for someone that's 83 to look 50, you know, so she wasn't supposed to go away. My favorite thing Joan Rivers has ever said is she said, if you have the money to buy a new car or buy a new face, buy the new face because you have to leave the car at the door when you go in the restaurant. (laughs) That's right. I love that. I didn't hear that, but I love that. She's brilliant. <laughs> Just like you. Thank you, Bobby, so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Nigel. Thank, Thank you, Bobby, Sam for having me. We on. love you. Give your chihuahua I some uh, you. some treats and some scratches. 